Welcome back to Fast Monty's Garage. Today is clearly upgrade day. I dropped that hint last video when I was on my last quarantine cruise. And by the way, if you've never seen a quarantine cruise, it'll give you a ton of inspiration and ideas for your project. But anyway, not to digress. Today, we are gonna upgrade my Phytech unit to include timing control. Now, this is kind of a big deal for me. The reason is, a couple of years ago, another video, so I'm dropping videos like crazy, but I plumbed the rear of my heads with AN lines to increase the cooling efficiency back there. That works for Fords and Chevys too. But I had so much plumbing going on, I had to remove the vacuum canister off of my HEI distributor because it wouldn't fit. And at the time, I was like, oh, that's cool. Race cars don't have vacuum canisters. I have a race car. No, I, no, I don't. I don't have a race car. I have a street car. Those of you guys that have street cars know, or may you, maybe you don't, but you really do need vacuum advance when you're at idle uh, or when you're cruising, because otherwise your car is going to be running really lean. Vacuum advance helps because it helps with cooling. It helps with your off idle um, acceleration or uh, throttle response. It also helps with fuel efficiency. So I'm excited to get that rolling. Now the reason you might want to consider going from an old school distributor to having the built-in system run your timing for you is that if you ever go dyno your car, if you have an old school distributor and vacuum advance, you really should get an adjustable vacuum advance and you can need a myriad of springs and weights to change your distributor if you want to do it right. Now, with uh, a computer, once we have this set up, we can play with all the settings. The idle timing, the cruise timing, your wide open throttle timing at different RPM ranges. We can do all that and we're gonna do that today. I'm gonna show you exactly what it takes to set that up. If you're brand new to the channel, welcome. I did a full playlist on how to install Phytech system and the kicker is I've never done it before. Just like today, I've never done this before. So I'm doing this at home. If I can do this, so can you. Now, one of the key takeaways from uh, a Phytech unit from all the other uh, EFI systems on the market, and this is my understanding, correct me if I'm wrong, but to utilize time and control on all those other systems, you need a CDI ignition or electronic ignition, like MSD makes a 6AL box, Phytech has their own, you do not need a digital ignition system to get timing control to work on a Phytech unit. And we're gonna prove it today because this is going to be installed on the next episode. So subscribe if you haven't. Now to kick things off, we're gonna go hit the bench. I'm gonna show you this Pro Billet distributor I got from MSD. Remember I mentioned I have an HEI distributor. You can get those to work. It's a pain in the butt. And as you guys know, I've had issues in the past with my HEI unit. So I'm just yanking that and we're upgrading to this. So let's go hit the workbench, show you what you need to do or what distributor you need and go from there. All right, team, before we dive into the guts of a distributor, we need to really talk about timing real quick. I know most of you know that pistons go up and down. I'm just kidding. Of course they go up and down. Now, the perfect location for a piston to be at before our fuel mixture explodes to push the piston down is actually around 20 to 15 to 20 degrees past top dead center. So this vertical line represents top dead center. I'll just put TDC here. And this measurement is about 20 degrees. So this, our crank angle is about 20 degrees past center. So the piston is already moving down and we get our bang, so to speak. Now, in the real world, our uh, engine is actually firing before top dead center. So it's called BTDC on this side. And that measurement is how we determine our advance. Now I wrote down some notes about where I'm currently uh, set up. So my base timing, we're going to refer to these numbers later, so um, this is why I want to talk about it now. So my base timing, so when you set up your engine, your old school engine, you're setting up a distributor with no vacuum advance when you first build your car, that's, that's the uh, measurement you're using. So 13 degrees 
Uh, our distributors have mechanical advance in them, and we're going to talk about this in a second. Mine is 24 degrees, all in at 2500 RPM. So that means at wide open throttle, I'm at 37 degrees advanced timing. And at cruise, this is where it gets interesting because I don't have a vacuum canister. Those of you guys have a vacuum advance. Imagine that you're cruising at 2,500, your mechanical is 37 degrees, you add 15 degrees of vacuum, roughly. That's over 50 degrees of advance. Okay, so now what does that mean? Great question. So let's use this real quick. So if our, ver this is a used to a degree your cam, I did a video on this too, but we're gonna use the vertical here as top dead center. So this mimics our uh, harmonic balancer. If you have markings on your harmonic balancer and your timing markings, okay? So I'm at 13. So that means right here at 13 degrees, this is where the harmonic balancer is. That means the piston is approaching top dead center because this would be rotating clockwise and there's top dead center. So at 13 degrees is my base timing. Now when someone says you advance your timing, that means you're adding numbers here. You're adding. So that means this mark is going this way. That's called advancing your timing. Retarding your timing is going the opposite way. So I know it gets confusing. So uh, when we're at idle, and you have a vacuum canister and you have the 13 degrees, most vacuum canister or the uh, vacuum advances are another 15 degrees. So you're at 28. So you're like right here when the engine or the distributor is telling the spark to fire. It's crazy, right? Crazy to think about that. So, and that's okay at idle. Your engine's not under load, it's under vacuum. It needs more time to burn through that uh, weaker mixture. And it sounds counterintuitive, but that is the moral of the story. So now let me, let's look at the distributor. All right, here's our pro billet. I'm taking, I took the cap off to show you the weights and springs that I referenced earlier about changing it because the way this works, if you can imagine, this is spinning at 2,500 RPM. The centripetal force will force these weights outward. Now watch what happens with this axis. Do you see these holes? I'm gonna do my best not to turn <laughs> the distributor base, but watch, watch it pivot. Do you guys see how it's pivoting? I know it's tough to tell, but it is moving off axis because it's rotating and advancing that curve. Now, what we need to do here is we have to prevent that from happening now because we're going to have the com computer change the timing. So that's one reason why you should get a pro billet or a distributor that you can lock that out. So I will walk you through that in a second. So another beautiful thing about uh, a pro billet distributor, it looks gorgeous for one, but there's no uh, vacuum advance to worry about because obviously you don't need it, but you also need what's called a two wire setup because on the Phytech throttle body, look, there's a cable, it just plugs right in. And that's for timing control. How beautiful is that? Now, those of you guys might be wondering, why is this not my car? Because I have another one in my car for port injection, which we did a few episodes ago. Go check out that video if you missed it. But uh, next step here is we have to lock this out and we're gonna go through that process. All right, so I took the weights and springs off. We have to take that nut off, but we have to pull this section out, which is connected all the way to the cam gear and then spin, take that nut off, spin this 180 and then relock it down to that hole which is not slotted that's what locks it out for us yep the fun never stops over here so what i suggest you do is you find a drift it almost matches the idea of this roll pin and i'll obviously have a two by four supporting it dowel this pin is straight up and lightly tap it out all right, there's a little bit more than light tapping, but anyway, I got the pin out. Now you can take your cam gear off. You can set that aside, but make sure these little retainers here, these washers, go with it and in the same orientation. So I'm just going to put them right on top of my cam gear over here so I know I won't forget. Now I can loosen up this nut and slide that shaft out. 
Okay, I got the lock nut and washer off of there. Now we can slide that top piece off like that. Rotate this around. Actually, we should probably remove this. Remove that bushing. And now we're going to put it back in this hole. And now we can't, it won't rotate around there. So that is locked out. So we'll put our lock nut back on. For those of you with roller cams, I highly recommend a polymer gear because uh, roller cams are much more aggressive on your valve train and you can easily do some damage to uh, your steel cam gear. And if you do that, you run the risk of ruining all your bearings in your engine. So a uh, good peace of mind. This isn't cheap, it's $140, but if I shred this, I just replace that. I don't have to replace anything in the engine. That's why it exists. So I'm gonna go ahead and reinstall this with those bushings and we'll go from there. Next step here to optimize our situation is you should get a phaseable rotor. So this actually you can rotate to advance or retard. Now we need to install this back on our um, main rotor and I'll show you what setting to use. All right before you put this cap on, I want to show you guys, you have to adjust this top tank. So here's the old one. You see how much higher that is? So luckily, MSD thought of a gauge. Here's the gauge on this tag. So I'm just going to adjust it so I'm within that range. When you go to put this on, there's a slot here with a mating slot on the back. And once you're centered, now what we need to do is depending on your distributor, because if you have a Chevy, your distributor rotates clockwise. If you have a Pontiac like me or a Ford, your distributor rotates counterclockwise. What you want to do, whatever direction you rotate, you want to advance it in that direction. Six to eight clicks on the back here, which is roughly half to three quarters of this distance. So if you can see, this is centered, so I'm going to go six-ish, seven-ish. And what that does is it gives us a little bit more freedom of uh, advancement from the computer because it's limited on how far you can advance it. And you're using the trailing edge, and that should minimize uh, any sparks underneath the cap. Last step is put some Loctite on this screw and lock it down. All right, boys and girls, now we're ready to roll. So I have to pull the other distributor, uh, get my wires transferred over, and we'll go from there. Look at the freaking size difference between these two. Isn't that crazy? Okay, next step here. Yes, I upgraded to a black cap because, well, everything's black on my car. So we need to transfer the wires, and I've always wanted to try this. Ready? One, two, three. It worked! Yes! Oh man, it's still smaller than this one. How crazy is that? I'm gonna go test fit it in the car, see what we got. There she is, boys and girls, all hooked up, looking good and tiny. Like, here's the before picture. As you can tell, it's a ton of room savings. And the other big difference is I had to add a coil. There she is on the firewall over there. I used my new rivet nut gun to put that in. Looks pretty clean. All right, now you guys see why I took that vacuum canister off? Look at the freaking size difference here. Yeah, I ran out of real estate. So, if any of you guys want a good deal on a brand new, well, recently refurbished, DUI HEI distributor with vacuum canister, throw in the lock-in plate and the polymer gear for a roller cam, hit me up. All right, we covered a lot today. This is a good breaking point because that gives people the opportunity to look at this video for locking out the distributor and setting the phasing rotor without talking about Phytec because as I've discovered, it's universal amongst almost all fuel injection systems. You need a phased rotor. Now, I've seen videos where people have not used a phase rotor and it works, that's fine, but I want to do it the right way. MSD recommends it too. So it doesn't matter what system you have, you have to lock out the mechanical advance in the distributor. If you have the vacuum canister, remove that and make sure you can lock that as well because that can move even though you don't have a hose connected to it. So I highly recommend that. That's why the billet distributor is so awesome because it 
perfect. Anyway, um, other things, if, if I've ever helped you out, consider getting a hat, maybe even a funny shirt. I don't make any profits on the shirt, links below. But next episode, we're gonna do full wiring and inputting our data into the handheld so we can finally control timing and fire this baby up. So stay tuned, subscribe if you haven't, and you guys know the drill. Building them fast, driving faster. See ya.